Welcome to the video tutorial on compartmental models part one. This is in April during the COVID-19 outbreak, so we're going to focus on that. So if you've seen other compartmental models, this is not completely about compartmental models in an exhaustive sense. All right, so what is a compartmental model? It's a model that tries to determine the composition of a population based on categories or compartments. For an example, an epidemiological model, the categories might be susceptible, exposed, infected, recovered. So susceptible is whether somebody has been exposed, has not been exposed yet, so they have yet to be exposed. Exposed is whether they've actually been exposed, but they're not sick. Uh, infected is what we're going to consider someone as being infected and they are sick. And recovered is after they've been infected and they have subsequently recovered from the disease. Now, and mortality, whether someone has perished due to the disease. Now, notice that these categories do not overlap. You're in one of the categories or the other. You can only be in one and you must be in one. And again, I'm going to say that we're focusing on the COVID-19 data because it's current relevance. All right, so suppose we want to understand the dynamics of these categories through time. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a little notation. So we'll let susceptible be S of T, exposed be E of T, as it's going to be a function. I of T is infected, R of T is recovered, and mortality will be noted as D of T. And these are functions of time, and you'll see the picture in a second, and it'll make sense. So basically, these are counts of the number of people in each category. So here's a simple example that just has two categories. So we're going to start simple, and then we're going to slowly add the other ones in. So here, S is the susceptible, and I is the infected. Now, what I did is I took the population of Italy, and I said, well, I know the COVID outbreak is in Italy. So let's see what it would look like if there's only susceptible and infected, which is completely unrealistic. But notice that as time goes along, the number of people who are susceptible is dropping because they are becoming infected. And at some point, everybody becomes infected and no one is no longer susceptible. So this is not the most ideal model, but it is a model that works uh, for illustration purposes. Now, what we want to do is add complexity to this model so it's useful. But first, we're going to have to go through and do a little bit of mathematics. So for this model, there's a simple two compartments, S and I. We can write this as a system of two ordinary differential equations. The partial of S over T, uh, dt, is basically this mixing coefficient or rate of infection times the how many people are susceptible times how many people are infected. So this is a way of modeling this, and it's a rate of infection. So basically, alpha is the rate of transmission if every infected person met every susceptible in person. Now, this is going to be a really tiny number, but these people, so the number, the change is going to be to how many people we have now, and we're going to send them to the I group. And you'll see how this plays out in a minute. You don't have to be an expert at differential equations to understand this, because we want to make this as simple as possible. But first, we're going to do some math to make this simple. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply each side by this partial of t. So this is just the change in time. In most data, it's just one day. Now, uh, so this is the difference. So this partial means the difference. So we're going to go back s of t minus dt or minus s of t at minus dt. So how much of the time did we look at beforehand? Usually this number is 1, and that's what we'll assume here in a minute. And we multiple cross-multiplied this dt here through and now we're going to push this through even further because this is just a number and this is the equation we had at the bottom on the other one so this is the difference is going to be related to how much time where we were before and where we are now so when i solve for s of t this is a really good interpretation and this is uh, a solver that we can use and this is the Euler solution to the problem there's lots of other solvers if you're a math person you're gonna probably scream at me and say you're not making it complex enough or hard enough no this is easy stuff okay so this is uh, the Euler solution to the problem there's other solvers such as Runge Kutta that you could use to solve this thing doesn't matter. I like this one because it's intuitive. We don't have to talk about taking averages of different solutions at different projection points in the future. We don't have to think about that. Here, all we're going to do is we're just going to take the Euler solution because you can think of it. How much we have today, S of t, is the amount we had yesterday, that's yesterday, S of t minus 1, minus the number of people who became infected yesterday. 
Okay, so this is alpha times the susceptible infected yesterday is what we had move. Okay, so this is the number of people who are leaving the susceptible. These are leaving the susceptible. We're subtracting them out. And we're then just adding them to the infected. So this is just moving people between two categories. And it's a very simple idea. It doesn't have to be complicated, even though the differential equation might intimidate you a little bit. Don't let it. This is super easy. And we're going to keep doing this mathematics, so keep that in mind. I'm just going to do it for you, but we're going to try to break everything down into this intuitive presentation of the differential equation. All right, so you can add things to the model if you wanted to. You could add things like birth rates and death rates. Here, kappa would be the birth rate. Here, xi would be the death rate. But for right now, we're going to leave these out of our model at the moment because we're trying to keep things simple. And the short period of time that the COVID virus is out, probably not going to have a lot of change in the actual start of the population. So the, the population isn't going to get a lot larger. Now, nine months from now, the population might get a lot larger. But right now, the, probably not. All right, so here's our picture just to see why this is a solution, right? We're having people move. They're moving from becoming or from being susceptible to being infected, okay? And notice that at the end, everybody's infected. At the beginning, everybody was susceptible. At the end, since everybody's been infected, no one is left susceptible, okay? This isn't that realistic again, so we want to add a little more complexity. So what we're going to do is we're going to add this recovered state. So this is another compartment you can be in. So here you're susceptible. We take those people who were susceptible and we're going to move them to infected. So those who become infected, then a certain amount of them will recover after a certain amount of time. So there's a recovery rate. So after they spend some time being infected, they're going to go into this group that's recovered. And this should actually be I of T here. That's a mistake. But I fix it down here, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, so here is our thing presented as a difference equation okay that's what these are called difference equations and these are pretty easy to look at you just say yesterday you know today is yesterday minus the people who got infected today the infecteds are the minus how many infections we had yesterday plus the number who became infected minus the number of people who recovered and the recovery just becomes how many people that recovered yesterday plus the number that recovered yesterday pretty easy and if i look at this this is a different dynamics now, look, not everyone gets infected, okay? And how you can tell that is, number one, the infections go away. But look at the people who recovered. So remember, everybody is eventually going to recover. And since people remain susceptible, a certain number of people remain susceptible in this particular format, not everybody gets infected, which is more realistic in the population. Not everybody's going to catch the disease. So this uh, interaction that we're talking about, that alpha, is what we're trying to change in order to keep people from getting uh, exposed to this or infected. All right, so now we can get a little more, uh, so I said add recovery, but here we're going to add exposed. So E is the exposed. We're going to put these people in. And they go between the susceptible and the infected, right? You can be exposed to the virus, and you could be spreading it around because you've been exposed to it, but you may never get sick, okay? So only a certain proportion of these people will get sick, and they will then move to the infected group. Now, it's probably more realistic that also some of them removed to the recovered group as well, but we'll add that later. Right now I'm trying to add one piece at a time so you can sort of think about it. We go from being susceptible to being exposed. Now we've got it. We're walking around. We're not sick yet. Then we become sick, and then we recover from being sick and move to here. So we move down through these states, and this is becoming more and more realistic, and if you turn this into a difference equation, this is what it looks like. And if I look at this with the picture, and notice I forgot to put the E in here, the exposed, but it's in the picture. The infections still go away, and you can see that the exposed lead the infected, which was what you would think. But eventually everybody, uh, in this case, uh, becomes uh, who was exposed becomes infected, and then they become recovered. So everything's good, right? The infections still go away. The disease goes away. And that's what type of dynamics we're talking about. We're modeling what's happening in each of these categories every day. And hopefully the infections go away. The disease goes away. 
All right, so this is what we're after. Now, what we're going to have to do is change some things. So these are really great theoretical models. However, doesn't match up with the data that we're going to have to use. So we're going to change some things around in the next video so you can see how to think about this. So here, we don't see exposed people. In the data, we don't see it. That's what I mean, and we don't see them. We don't see them in the data. We only see infected people who are sick and have been tested. Okay, So there might be people out there who are infected, become sick, never get tested, never go through the system, so we don't know about them. Uh, we do see deaths that have occurred from those who got sick and sought treatment, but we don't see those who are exposed, don't see treatment, recover on their own, or die on their own. This also assumes that no interventions have been done to mitigate the transmission. So when we go to the COVID-19 data set, which is in the repository that you'll see in a couple more videos when we actually do this in R, uh, the, we have the number of confirmed infections, we have the number of deaths due to the infection, and we have the number of people who were confirmed to be infected and then recovered. So we only have a couple of these states. That's where we're going to have to modify our model. But we'll do that in the next video. So see you there. Thank you.